Hi, I'm Sean Duggan. In this episode of the Lightroom Viewfinder, I'm going to take a look at the Lightroom Photoshop connection and cover the different possible scenarios that arise when you take a raw file from Lightroom, bring it into Photoshop to add layers or other enhancements, save it back to your Lightroom catalog, and then open it into Photoshop again for further editing. The goal of this video is to help you become familiar with how things work under the hood to ensure that the file you're bringing into Photoshop has as much tonal and color quality as possible. And when you use Lightroom to reopen a layered file, you also want to be sure that it preserves all the previous work you've done in Photoshop. First we'll take a look at the external editing preferences. From the Lightroom menu on a Mac, choose Preferences. On Windows you'll find the preferences in the Edit menu. In the Preferences dialog, click on the External Editing tab. For files that you're bringing into Photoshop, you have two choices for how the file is saved, TIFF or PSD. Either one will support layers and any of the other extras you might add in Photoshop. If you're going to be opening HDR exposures into Photoshop through the Merged HDR Pro command, and then saving the merge result as a 32-bit file that you can work on in Lightroom, then you'll want to choose TIFF for the file format, because at the present time, Lightroom will not let you work on a 32-bit PSD file. For color space choices, the size of the color gamut of each space is listed with the largest at the top and the smallest at the bottom. For raw captures that I'm opening as 16-bit files in Photoshop, I use ProPhoto RGB simply because it is a wide gamut space that preserves as much of the color information my camera captured as possible. For bit depth, I use 16-bit because that preserves all of the tonal quality and bit depth that was captured by my camera in the raw file. Converting to 8-bit would discard a lot of that information. 16-bit may not be appropriate for all workflows, and the files are much larger, so you'll have to determine for yourself if a 16-bit workflow is best for your needs. It's important to note here that both ProPhoto RGB and 16-bit are not suitable for 8-bit JPEG files. I'll delve into that side of the equation in Part 2 of this episode. The resolution setting here is really just a convenience. You can always change it to something else later on. I typically set it to what I print at on my inkjet printers, and that's usually 240 ppi. At the very bottom is where you can assign a naming template to the files that get opened in Photoshop. The default behavior in Lightroom is to append dash edit onto the original file name. I've modified that for my own purpose by creating a name template that adds a dash m onto the original file name. m stands for master file, which is how I designate my layered files. Okay, let's move back to the library module. I have a file that is a raw original, showing a church along a road in Iceland. I've already applied some Lightroom adjustments to the file, and you can see the before and after versions here. To bring it into Photoshop to apply further editing, I can go to the Photo menu in either the Develop, Library, or Map modules and choose Edit in, Edit in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Now there's also a choice here to open as a smart object in Photoshop. This will essentially embed a copy of the raw file in the layered Photoshop file, but it will allow you to use Adobe Camera Raw to edit any Lightroom adjustments that you may have made to the file. I'll be covering that aspect of working with raw files in another video. For now, I'll just use the shortcut of Command-E on a Mac or Control-E on Windows to bring the file into Photoshop. This will open a full-size version of the file with any Lightroom adjustments that you may have made applied to the image. The color space and bit depth will be what you have specified in the external editing preferences. So for this file, what I wanted to do was apply some selective blurring to the image, as well as add a canvas texture, which are both edits that I could not do in Lightroom. In addition to the custom blurring and the texture, I've also added several adjustment layers, and you can see all my layers here in my Layers panel. Now I want to cover how to save the file so that it gets added back into the Lightroom catalog. When you use Lightroom to bring a raw file, or a virtual copy of a raw file into Photoshop via the edit in command, all you need to do is choose file save in Photoshop. The file will be saved with all the new modifications that you made in Photoshop and it will be added to your Lightroom catalog in the same folder as the original file. If we go back to Lightroom now we can see the thumbnail of this new layer TIFF file and it has the file name that I specified in the external editing preferences. What a lot of people want to do in this situation, however, is choose File, Save As, and give the file a new name, simply because that's what they've been taught over the years as the best way to open a file, protect the original, and create a new version of the file. 
Now this is still a good way to work if you want to save a new version of an image and the Photoshop session did not originate in Lightroom. But if you did begin in Lightroom, choosing File Save As will not automatically add the file back into your Lightroom catalog. So just choose File Save. Now what if you did choose File Save As? How do you get the image to show up in your Lightroom catalog? Well, assuming you save the file into the same folder as the original, you could simply right click on that folder in the library module and choose Synchronize Folder. Lightroom will scan the contents of the folder and see if there are any new files that are not currently part of its file list for that folder, and then let you import the new file. If you've saved the file to a different location somewhere else on your system, you'll have to go about the process of importing the file at that location or moving it to a different location and then importing it. So now I have my image of the church saved with all of its layers and it's been added into my Lightroom catalog. I'm going to close the file in Photoshop and return to Lightroom to discuss the choices you're presented with once you decide to reopen a layered file into Photoshop. So I'll select the thumbnail of my layered TIFF file and in addition to using the Command E or Control E shortcut I can also just right click either on the thumbnail or on the larger preview image and choose Edit in Edit in Adobe Photoshop CS6. A dialog will appear with three options. The most important thing to know about these choices is that if you're opening a file that has layers in it and you want to work with those layers again, then you want to avoid the first choice, which is edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Because what it does, and what they don't mention in the short description here, is that it will flatten the layers in the copy that it opens. Now it is just a copy, so the original layered file that you made in Photoshop is still there in the catalog but there will be no layers in the file that you open with this option. This choice only makes sense if you've made additional Lightroom adjustments after creating the layered file and you no longer want or need to have access to the layers. So to illustrate this, I'll cancel out of this dialog and make a couple of quick changes. I'm going to make the image black and white and I'll boost the contrast. Just something so we can notice the difference. Now I'll use Command E or Control E again to bring up that dialog. And I'll select the first option, Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments. The copy opens with the Lightroom changes visible, but if you look at the Layers panel, you see that there's no layers in the file. Now if I want, I can save this new copy just by choosing File Save as I did in the previous example, and a new TIFF version of this image will be added to my catalog. I'll close this version without saving it and return to Lightroom. The next choice, Edit a Copy, will create a new copy of the image, but it will preserve any layers that are in the file. Any Lightroom adjustments that you may have made after creating the original layered file, however, will not be part of this new copy. This option would make sense if you wanted to work with the layers that you've already created, but maybe take the image in an entirely different direction. If you chose to save this version of the image, a new copy would be added to the Lightroom catalog, all the layers would be in place, but the changes that you had applied in Lightroom before choosing to edit a copy, that is, in this case, the black and white and the high contrast, would not be present in the new copy that was saved. The last choice, Edit Original, is the one that I use the most often in my own workflow. Unfortunately, the wording here is not all that clear, and most people's initial understanding of this option is different from what it actually does. So what exactly does original mean in this context? Well, nearly every person I have ever asked this question has assumed that by original it is referring to the original file captured by the camera. But that is not the case. In this instance, original means the file that has been edited and saved in another program. So in this case, it is referring to my layered TIFF file that I saved from Photoshop. Using this choice with a file that already has layers will open the image in Photoshop and any layers that you have previously added will be preserved. You can then do more work on the file, maybe add more layers if needed, and then save the file and the file will be updated in the Lightroom catalog. There's another advantage to the Edit Original option, however, that involves being able to add and keep new Lightroom adjustments as well as preserve the layers in the PSD or TIFF file. To illustrate this, I'll make a few more changes in Lightroom's develop module. The contrast boost was a bit heavy-handed, so I'll get rid of that by double-clicking on the word region right here underneath the tone curve. And I think I'll add a split tone. I already have a preset saved for a split tone that I like, so I'm just going to go and grab that. 
and apply that. I'll choose Command E or Control E. And in the dialog, I'm going to make sure I choose Edit Original. Now the description of this choice indicates that Lightroom adjustments will not be visible. But that only pertains to when the file is open in Photoshop. Any Lightroom adjustments that you've added will still be present and associated with the file when you're viewing it in Lightroom. Let's take a look. In Photoshop, I'm going to make a couple of changes that are really obvious just so that we can see the difference once we return to Lightroom. I'll make a circular selection over the sky here using the elliptical selection tool. Something just like that. And I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. And I'm just going to really brighten up the sky to make a, a really light circle there in the sky. Next I'm going to go to the mask properties panel and I'm going to turn the feather up quite a lot. And the aim here is just to make it look like a big glow in the sky. Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm going to make a copy of this layer here. And in the copy, I'm going to come back to the mask properties and lower that feather down so I can see the hard edges of that circle a little bit better. And I'm going to lower the layer opacity so that it's not very distinct. My aim here is just to provide a sense of that circular shape with the bright glow around it. So we have a little bit of a kind of a supernatural celestial event happening here. I will now save my file and close it and we'll go back to Lightroom and see what it looks like. So as you can see the previous Lightroom adjustments that made the image black and white and added the split tone are still there but the new modifications that I just made in Photoshop are also visible. That's why I tend to use the Edit Original Choice. I find that it gives me the most options and flexibility in terms of retaining both the layers in the file as well as any Lightroom adjustments I decide to add later. I'm Sean Duggan and thanks for watching the Lightroom Viewfinder. If your workflow includes JPEGs, check out part 2 of this episode to see some of the differences in how Lightroom handles JPEG files that you're moving back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop. You can also find more resources at my website, seanduggan.com.